good morning, dear colleagues. Let's cover cyanide types. This is one of the earliest uh, processes of photoprinting, which is still being used. And the reason is that it's uh, very simple and it's uh, almost uh, uh, fail-proof. So originally, uh, xenotype was used in a very narrow way. So Herschel himself used it to copy uh, mathematical uh, charts, and William Talbot used it to copy old uh, um, uh, uh, wood carvings. And, uh, also, we can remember how an atlas of uh, plants was published, a map of plants uh, was published in 1848, uh, where instead of drawings we had photos, or to be more correct, um, photograms uh, of plants used by cyanotypes. In 1860s, uh, which uh, cyanotype uh, became widely popular as a process, especially for getting control prints from negatives. Uh, so some expensive photographic processes based on uh, silver and platinum were used. And also uh, uh, natural scientists opened the process from 1870 till the middle of the 20th century. So the cyanotype and its main processes were the main processes used by engineers and architects to copy drawings, uh, layouts, and uh, diagrams. So it was like uh, the golden era of the cyanotype. So in 1872, the first cyanotype paper was manufactured in uh, France, uh, and in 1875, a student students of Massachusetts uh, Technological University were uh, officially told to use cyanotype to copy drawings, and in 1876, in Philadelphia, in the United States, uh, the first machine for cyanotype printing uh, made in Switzerland uh, was exhibited. So, after uh, 1950s, cyanotype uh, was replaced uh, by cheaper and simpler processes. And at that time, uh, cyanotype moves to the area of art. So, special photo artists uh, which focused on alternative uh, printing techniques and artists started to um, master this technique and quite often at an exhibition today you can see works in, in mixed techniques uh, with the use of uh, cyanotypes. So cyanotype as a technology didn't die and after 1992 English uh, chemist Michael Weir uh, upgraded and improved the formula of uh, cyanotypes. So as it was highly popular at the end of uh, 19th and early 20th century, you have a lot of cyanotypes in many museum um, archives, and conservation of cyanotypes is what uh, uh, many conservators do. A couple of words of how the image uh, was done. So, sir, um, John Herschel was uh, the first uh, scientist to um, discover that uh, iron salts were light sensitive, and he uh, informed the London's uh, Royal Scientific Society about that. So he covered uh, his um, a paper with iron or ferric chlorides or uh, f f ammonium ferric citrates. And after exposing to light, so he got the mm, contrast image. So the interaction between these salts led to the so-called uh, Berlin or Prussian blue. 
uh, so which was uh, a special uh, uh, ferric acid. So it uh, produced a cold blue color, and it was uh, soluble in colloids. So and it was not just a mechanical. Uh, passive uh, powder, but could really uh, dye the fiber itself. So in fine arts and paintings, it's uh, very difficult to wash it away from the paper. So despite the fact that this technique was based on water, and to fix the image you need to wash it with paper, it's considered that in conservation processes you should uh, minimize uh, water expo uh, exposure of the artifacts. And our confidence in that was partially shattered after the fact uh, that our workshop uh, uh, got like uh, in some archive documents, a package, which were where sheets, paper sheets, were badly damaged uh, by water. So the package contained uh, six uh, layouts, uh, which were produced as cyanotypes. Uh, damages were quite different uh, in in terms of the degree. Some uh, flow charts were in a satisfactory conditions, but some were in a really poor state. So the basis of the cyanotype was different in forms mainly, and it had colors, and it was integrated under the action of moisture, and the binder was uh, also destroyed in many places. And in these spots, uh, we also saw the process of uh, fiber deterioration, and uh, the typical blue velvet tone was not uh, totally lost, with the exception of uh, those spots uh, where there was uh, direct exposure to moisture. And I must say that this case uh, belongs to the collections of documents of the Commission on uh, Assumption Cathedral and Annunciation Cathedral. And uh, the roof of the tower was destroyed, and uh, the papers uh, were stored there for a long period, and uh, they were most likely not to be evacuated in war even. And it's also worth mentioning that uh, actually the thoroughness of the reason, the freshly printed cyanotype, uh, means a lot uh, in uh, its uh, proneness uh, to fading. And high quality rinsing increases uh, the preservation. Rinsing should be such thorough, so thorough that uh, no sensibilizer's presence uh, should be left. But at the same time, uh, we have to understand that uh, long rinsing in water can uh, cause baptization uh, of uh, Berlin blue. And, uh, very often uh, we may see it uh, only in uh, large damage. Therefore, we need to strike balance. And uh, therefore, to avoid the risk of losing the image, uh, they voice advice uh, to avoid uh, even ordinary water rinsing. And uh, I would also like to mention that uh, Berlin blue is a uh, mixed cyanide, uh, and uh, its blue color is also destroyed uh, under the action of acids and alkali, and uh, cyanides uh, go off. And and uh, research of American colleagues uh, prove uh, that uh, Prussian blue is destroyed by uh, wild uh, alkaline much faster uh, than uh, the paper is uh, destroyed uh, 
when exposed to acid. Therefore, cyanotypes are recommended to be stored in a metacidic environment, and the conservators understanding that uh, how to preserve the interest of preserving the image. And if rinsing is believed necessary for the artifact conservation, it is better to use a static bath with distilled water. And an even better treatment way is the so-called moist bag. And then, it would be possible uh, to trace uh, even the smallest signs uh, of uh, damage uh, to Prussian blue. Here I have shown just some pages from the case, and I must say that there is pretty large collections in our museum that suffered the most in the post-revolutionary era, and the set of conservation of documents, books, work, has worked for a long time uh, conserving these collections. When we started it, there was certain contradiction between the theory and the uh, practical experience of classical recommendations to cyanotypes uh, conservation. So we decided uh, to test it on uh, a sample, and uh, we opted for an experiment whose goal was uh, to determine how rinsing can influence uh, the external look of a cyanotype, and if uh, there are no external changes, will it uh, have a negative impact uh, on the cyanotype uh, in terms of long-term preservation? And uh, new, fresh cyanotypes uh, were printed uh, on uh, paper that externally looked uh, similar to the paper of our artifact. And uh, here I must say that it is clear, it is uh, hard to name this experiment clear because uh, no full uh, research on the fiber composition of our cyanotypes had taken place. Out of uh, the fresh cyanotypes printed, uh, one was selected that uh, reminded most of the properties of the, those of the artifact. It was cut in two, and one of the halves was uh, rinsed during one hour in distilled water, and afterwards uh, the rinsed uh, fragment was cut in two again. And uh, the first half uh, that was not rinsed uh, was also cut in two, and one fragment, I would say. So one square remained as uh, an initial sample. And the three others were subject to aging in moisture and heat during three days and nights, which corresponds to several natural years of aging. And afterwards, we had therefore four samples. One was test sample, the second was aged, the third rinsed and aged, and uh, the fourth uh, rinsed, aged, and double. After this artificial aging, no significant color changes uh, were identified. So the changes could be measured only two digits after the floating point. And it corresponds uh, to paper aging in the natural conditions. We also tested pH, and uh, we took uh, the measures uh, from uh, both the face and the reverse side. Uh, on the face, uh, we uh, took the measurements in uh, four spots, uh, blue, uh, light blue, and dark blue, and uh, white. And in the reverse, uh, in the level of printing and on the white field. I will not quote all the values. I will just say that we cannot say that we have identified significant uh, pH levels drop. 
Interestingly, these measurements have shown that the rinsed and aged original gave the spring back to the composition of the original that was not rinsed uh, or aged. Maybe it was accounted for by the fact that uh, not all of the reactants were rinsed off and cyanotype behaved somewhat better. And here I would also like to add that all measurements on the face of the page showed higher alkaline properties than the reverse <coughs> of serotype. As uh, no significant uh, paper properties uh, drops were identified here, and uh, the rinsed and aged uh, sample even returned uh, the properties uh, to the initial ones, we decided uh, to also test uh, the uh, double folds. And uh, what we took uh, was uh, the page uh, samples in the machine direction uh, according to our ghost standard. So we took 10 samples and then uh, we received the mean average and it did not uh, show significant changes uh, in uh, mechanical strength of cyanotype either. That is why we opted against uh, running the test uh, lateral samples uh, or the sample that uh, we doubled as it was not viable. And uh, we can uh, conclude uh, that uh, cyanotype treatment, in our case, uh, at least, uh, does not uh, have a significant impact on uh, fibers uh, or connection strength uh, or properties of cyanotype. Therefore, starting concerning the artifact uh, and uh, Bearing in mind uh, the history of its existence, uh, weighing all uh, pros and cons, and by the way, some of uh, the cyanotypes uh, were two and a half, three meters long, but still we decided that we needed to rinse, but the uh, better way to do so would be the so-called moist bag, as we would be able to have a close look at the condition of uh, the paper, and uh, if uh, any, we would be able to trace uh, the signs of transition of Berlin blue. And uh, so for around a week, uh, cyanotypes uh, got used to being in unfolded condition. And uh, during that time, uh, dust was removed uh, from uh, cyanotype and we tried uh, to select all the fragments uh, that uh, used to be between uh, some other parts and we were trying to find the initial position. The complexity in this archive case was that it contained both the original and the copy and the documents uh, were damaged differently and comparing the original with the copy we could uh, therefore uh, find uh, the location of uh, each of the fragments. Then the work was done uh, on uh, the table with the Lenex film and we made a pillow of three or four layers of uh, moist uh, filter paper covered the, with Polytex uh, then melinex and filter paper in that condition, if needed, was possible to be replaced without damaging the brittle object. The condition of uh, the object was under control 24-7. Then the conservation paper, it was also prepared on melinex, small uh, fragments uh, was treated with glue, and then it was was uh, 
attached to the reverse of the aircraft. The constellation paper was layered until uh, the fragment uh, became even in width, uh, and then the whole weakened section was uh, duplicated uh, with uh, thin Japanese uh, paper and uh, the folds and edges and uh, spots of uh, large uh, D shaping of the flowcharts for layouts uh, were also focused. Dried up took uh, two stages. First, the pressed moist sanotype uh, had holy tags and filter paper and cardboard uh, added to them and uh, it was uh, attached uh, to the sheet of the table and uh, then it was uh, placed uh, to the large press. In the large press uh, it uh, spent a pretty long time and uh, we had to be totally sure that our object is fully stable and uh, deformation will not come back. Another delicate matter of aesthetics was that uh, when we selected paper for working on losses, I tried to tone, so I colored uh, different papers of uh, blue tones, and uh, I even tried what it would look like on uh, one of the small fragments, but in discussions it was decided uh, to restore it uh, with untoned paper, so we decided that it would look uh, more natural and better. And that was also a reason why we refused the toning. So here was uh, yet another test of toning uh, for the color of uh, the environment, but at Conservation Commission we opted against. So all the other pages of the case were conserved as well, and now a decision has been made that as we had both the original and the copy, the original is now stored in folders in unfolded condition and the copy is punched according to the previous folded and bound into the locations where it used to be stored. Conservation was uh, completed not long ago, and uh, once uh, author's inspection has been done, and uh, so far no changes have identified. So, so far the document has existed in a stable way, but naturally we will go on uh, monitoring that, but so far it is like that. And I would also like uh, now to thank all my colleagues, because I consulted uh, everyone who I could, who had uh, any kind of experience of uh, working with uh, these uh, matters, and I would like to thank uh, the sector of uh, preventive uh, conservation, Russian State Library, Center of Document Conservation, of uh, high education institution libraries and the laboratory of biological control and supervision of uh, the archives of uh, scientific and technical documentation. So I would like to express my gratitude to all of you who helped us in conservation of this document. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Nadezhda.